Rudy Giuliani, had his license to practice law suspended in New York. And just this week, a newly filed complaint will potentially make his suspension from practicing law in D.C. permanent. So let me, I'll start, I started with this clip because we all know that New York and D.C. are specifically Democrat courts. It's the, in D.C., isn't that the same one that General Flynn was kept in jail by Sullivan, even though he was supposed to be released? So, uh, there's, let, let me let me let me back up a little bit. So first of all, you know the January sixth committee is composed of I think nine people, two of whom are Republicans, all of whom seem to have Trump, or at least many of them seem to have Trump living rent free in their heads, possibly for at least the last two years. So here's my thing. In a, if I mean, for normal people, if you go to court, you have a prosecutor and a defense attorney. But in this case, all you have is prosecutors and no defense attorney. So what kind of democracy is that? How is that American? In America, when we have a court, we have the defense and we have the prosecutor. But here, these Democrats, all they have is, is prosecutors. Um, the Republicans' minority leader tried to pick two balancing people, but instead Pelosi picked two Republicans that were also anti-Trump. So that's, that's the first issue right here, is there's all prosecutors and no defense. You're only getting one side, and it's the Democratic Party that's doing this. Common guys have defense and a prosecuting attorney. Today, as you can see, was uh, not about January 6th, but about before January 6th. So really, Trump is on trial, and Giuliani is on trial, and uh, it just happens to be that Giuliani's son is going to be running in an election. So sur I'm not surprised the Democrats are targeting him. In fact, I, from what I understand, committees are not supposed to be used for a particular political party's purpose. But in this case, a government committee is being used largely by Democrats to attack uh, various Republicans. All right. The next thing, um, uh, there were people in here, witnesses, like from Trump's staff. One of the guys said that uh, uh, that he had gotten a lot of threats from people after Trump had made a tweet. So a lot of these witnesses seem to have access to grind with Trump. If there was a defense attorney, I'm sure when they said something about Trump, the defense attorney would have come up and pointed out uh, the weaknesses in what these people said and the fact that they had an ax to grind in the first case. But there was no one in here to do that because this was selected so that there was nobody in there to do that. Now, Barr, in one part, I remember him saying that there were a lot of election complaints. Um, it makes sense to me if there are a lot of election complaints that um, there might be some reason for being concerned about the election, even if a lot of them may have turned out to be illegitimate a lot of complaints would certainly explain why Trump had concerns. And I'm sure defense attorneys would have discussed this. Also, you notice that in this, they had selected, um, for example, the Fox News guy. 
gave Fox News like a justification for Fox News to call the Arizona election. Well, of course, the Fox News guy is going to defend Fox's call of the Arizona election early. Well, let me ask you, why didn't they have somebody up there presenting the opposite side? Again, because this is a ridiculously biased commute, uh, uh, committee. This is the kind of propaganda thing you expect from communist China and Nazi Germany to be honest, where you, you're just going to get one side of the story and not the other. Um, so if you have issues with the election, they'll give arguments here why they thought they were not issues, but they had none of the professionals, uh, and there were some people with PhDs and doctorates, and there were lawyers and other people that had reasonable arguments and they, they did not have people defending that other side. Again, because this was a biased uh, committee. Um, so, yeah, the Fox News guy, uh, the experts, people had an ax to grind. Um, they mentioned voting uh, voting machines, like the Dominion voting machines. Recently, CISA came out with like non, nine vulnerabilities. Um, there was at the near the end, if you look at the end of the video, they had um, they had these people. Uh, let me see. I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking for them. They had some people from the um, that were saying that they had concerns about the Dominion voting machine. Like one girl said how she saw the Wi-Fi symbol. Obviously, if people saw things on the machines that gave them concerns, don't you think those concerns should be addressed? But they tried to present it like that's some evidence that, uh, you know, the voter fraud was illegitimate. Um, what else? I'll give you, I'll give you another example here. So listen to this. The claims that the election was stolen were so successful. President Trump and his allies raised $250 million. All right. So they raised $250 million. I think that's great that they raised $250 million. What else? The Select Committee discovered that the Save America PAC made millions of dollars of contributions to pro-Trump organizations, including $1 million to Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows' Charitable Foundation, $1 million to the America First Policy Institute, a conservative organization which employs several former Trump administration officials, $204,857 to the Trump Hotel Collection, and over $5 million to Event Strategies, Inc., the company that ran president. Okay, so let's do a little math here. All right, so uh, America First Policy Institute had some previous Trump people working for it. Um, so he has money. It's not going to go to organizations that will do stuff for Trump that has some of his people working for them. Um, all right, the Trump Hotel Collection. 200,000. All right. 5 million to this event strategies incorporated, um, which again, uh, doesn't seem entirely unreasonable. Now, 1 million, they said was a Mark Meadows, uh, uh, organization, charitable organization or something. So out of this whole group here, maybe a little over one, uh, 1 million is really questionable. So when you're talking about $250 million and you're doing 1 million out of 250 million people, you're talking about like, um, what is it? Half a percent of the money because 1 million out of 100 million would be 1%. So 1 million out of 200 million would be half a percent. So 1 million out of 250 million 
So that means like 99% of the people's monies went to stuff that was at least looking reasonable for donations to Trump for them to go to. This event strategies, I believe, was the Stop the Steal rally. You don't think people donating wanted the Stop the Steal rally? So it means over 99% of the money going to Trump was actually going to reasonable sources. So to me, they tried to make these numbers look like he was doing something wrong. So this was like a big propaganda show. Now I'm going to I'm going to close with what I started this with. And that's simply that this committee was all prosecutors and no defense. What kind of court is that? What kind of fair court is that? If you went into court and you were not allowed a defense attorney, would that be right? Do, do you personally think that would be right? You tell me. And now, if any news agency is talking about this and they don't tell you that this is all prosecutors, all anti-Trump people, I just want to say that there was, there's something wrong with your news source. And that, that is my quick summary and assessment of this two and a half hours. Thank you.